Welcome back. I've recently had a few inquiries about the uh, types of slings that you've seen me use in some of my shooting v videos and uh, I've also had some uh, questions about how to set a sling up correctly, a military sling. Well, I'm going to talk about it. It may not be as mundane an issue as a lot of people might uh, think it to be. I think it's a rather important issue. The type of sling that you have on a rifle is vitally important to your uh, sh shooting accuracy, uh, your physical your physical ability to control the rifle. Now, one of the more popular types of slings, and there are many. You know, if you go if you go into any uh, catalog online, you can see if you just just type in sling, and you're going to come up with probably you know 250 different types of slings at the very least. Um, one of the more popular forms of slings is popularly called a Cobra sling, and you'll see it right here. I was I was gifted this Cobra sling, oh, probably 40 years ago, uh, and I've you know I've gone afield with this sling. Uh, it has it has some uh, it, it it carries it carries a rifle pretty well. Uh, it can be it can be used as a kind of a rudimentary crude uh, hasty sling um, with great limitation that doesn't have any adjustability. The adjustability factor is limited to a few, uh, you know, a, a few difficult to adjust holes down on the bottom here. Uh, and, you know, as your clothing bulk changes, uh, your ability to, to whip it into uh, shooting a style is, is rather limited. It's stylish, there's no question about that. But uh, I haven't, I really haven't used this sling for decades. Um, my preference goes to the most effective type of sling of all, which is a shooter's sling. One that can be configured into what's typically called a loop sling. Now, in, in its earliest form, which was the what's called the model 1907 sling. That was a leather sling that was developed by the military and it's got uh, brass dogs. It's a very heavy, uh, very durable uh, horse hide or cow hide or steer hide uh, leather. And uh, they were made they were made of top grain uh, hide, very, very smooth on one side, uh, very durable and on the inside it was a uh, you know, russet finish, a little bit of a uh, uh, suede finish, and um, but they were very handsomely made. They're still being made. If you get one of uh, good quality, uh, you're, you're talking somewhere around uh, $85 or more, and uh, those are those are popular among. Uh, they're still very popular among CMP shooters and people who uh, shoot in the accuracy game, uh, shooting uh, in competitive sports and. There's everything to be said for them in that regard. However, there, you know, for the in in terms of the practical use, the military found during World War II very quickly that uh, they didn't sustain very well uh, in in combat conditions, field conditions where soldiers were outdoors, uh, you know, 24/7. Uh, they leather being what it is, uh, it tended to after a while either rot or the the brass hardware on it began to get uh, corroded. Uh, the leather could also get very heavy and uh, transfer transfer a wetness to the garments that the soldiers were wearing and create issues with uh, all, they didn't dry out well so it would cause issues with um, you know moisture against the skin of the soldier and everything and cause rashes so in practical terms they didn't sustain very well in long-term combat usage um, so during World War II um, there was, and also too, because they're much much easier to produce uh, on a on a fast scale. Uh, the cotton the cotton web sling was uh, introduced. Now this is a this is not just a simple cotton carry sling. A rather simple cotton carry sling was developed for the M1 carbine because uh, it was more or less just a uh, that was a that was a carbine rifle that was. Uh, generally slung over somebody's shoulder who was working uh, not necessarily in a, in a combat uh, MOS, 
uh, in, a, in his his MOS may have been maybe as a cook or a typist or something like that, uh, somebody rear echelon personnel uh, or sometimes uh, officer personnel who didn't necessarily have to have a combat arm uh, with them all the time. And so it was not so much a, a, a shooting a shooting sling, a marksman sling, as it was a carry sling, and it was very effective at that. But the, the one and a quarter inch Garand sling, as it's called, uh, was developed by uh, the military to do the same exact thing that a leather 1907 uh, sling would do with all the brass, brass hardware on it and everything. In actual, in, in actual practice, it was found to be uh, very effective. First of all, being, being cotton, it dried out just as quickly as the uh, clothing on a, on a soldier's uh, back. Um, it didn't, so therefore it didn't uh, tend to, uh, you know, transfer lingering wetness to their garments and, and cause problems that way. Um, it was very, very quickly uh, adjustable, more quickly than even uh, the finer quality uh, leather slings. It could just by, just by simply flicking this uh, lever, it could be uh, very, very quickly changed in terms of uh, adjustment for the, to suit the needs of the soldier immediately uh, within seconds so it was very handy in that regard and also because it didn't have uh, it, it it didn't rely on uh, a dog that had you know two hooks on it that had to find uh, holes in the leather it, it didn't have the limitation of having hole spacing which you know sometimes one could be too tight and one could be too loose so it's infinitely adjustable, and for somebody who was actually using it as a shooting sling, it was a tremendous asset. Uh, they lasted throughout. They lasted throughout combat, and uh, were very, very effective. Um, let me just put this on here, and I'll show you. This this can be used uh, as a very effectively, as the same way that the cobra sling can be used. Uh, it's a one and a quarter inch wide fabric, so therefore it's also um, Got good support on the shoulder. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't have any issues with regard to being uh, unsupportive. So you can be. It can be slung over very, very, very comfortably, and that one and a quarter inch wide uh, strap will provide plenty of comfort uh, carrying it all day long. Also, too, the cotton, uh, it being a being a very heavy denier, uh, it's not only it's not only rigid. Uh, and it's not uh, not by any means flimsy, but it, that heavy denier uh, stays put. So if you're if you're jogging along in a march, uh, it doesn't it doesn't slide off your it doesn't slide off your clothing. So it's it's very very practical in that regard. For that reason, I don't I don't have any use for a uh, nylon sling. Nylon slings don't stay put on your shoulder uh, with virtually any kind of clothing that you wear. And they also uh, the adjustments uh, don't necessarily stay put as easily with the same hardware. This this hardware is very very is very usable with the cotton sling, and it stays put like uh, you know. I mean that's that's a vice that will not move. So there's a lot of practical usage for the cotton sling, um, durable beyond um, beyond any. Uh, need for the average uh, citizen. I mean, they lasted all the way through combat. Now, there's a way to rig this particular sling so that it can be used in, in ways that are far more beneficial than simply a carry sling, which is basically a, nothing more than a strap. Uh, and it can also be used as a hasty sling, which very rapidly can be thrown into position to give a person uh, tremendous support so that it, it basically it, it uh, leverages the gun right against your body so that it won't change and that's 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 called a hasty sling to get into a hasty sling position you just simply drive your arm through and up and over and you're in it and that can be done sitting prone kneeling standing except if you're in competition you you'll get disqualified very very quickly if you found uh, using the sling in a standing offhand position uh, 
you know, shooters shooting in those standing offhand positions will always typically either either take the sling off. Most of them won't do that. They'll just simply grab hold of the sling so it can be nobody can contest that that's being used as any support device. So that's typical. Now, and by the way, this rifle has been just as I always do. This rifle has been checked before I came online. Um, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine that some of these people on, you know, that, that write into me tell me that I swing the rifle around and everything. And well, you know, this is. This is no more hazardous than a toothbrush. It's, you know, it's been checked out. So, <clears throat> the way that you really can use a shooting sling is as called a loop sling. Now, a loop a loop sling is very is very easy to fashion. Uh, a lot of people are not aware. When I read the reviews online about uh, this sling, you know, if I go to uh, Oh, I might go to Midway's website or something like that, and I'll see the I'll see the reviews. Uh, very, very, very few people are aware that this is a uh, this this is a shooter's aid. So by pulling open that loop now, if I turn it one turn outboard, I can simply place my my arm in, and this is obviously not, and this is why we call one a hasty sling, and this is a loop sling. This is not hasty. You have to have a little bit of time in order to do this but now that I have that now that I have that engaged with my arm solidly and it's up high in my bicep and it's coming out at the 12 o'clock position right on the top of my bicep now I just lay my arm down over the over the sling it becomes a much more intricate part of my body Better in terms of uh, precision accuracy than the hasty sling. Although the hasty sling, you know, you can you'd be surprised how how effective that is. I can I can shoot almost as well with a hasty sling as I can with this. But this is the this is the finest form of uh, accuracy that you can get. Now with a with a light recoiling rifle, your elbow can be dropped without any uh, issues. Heavy recoiling rifles that uh, can come back and and really come into your shoulder and you need to have more support you want to raise your you want to raise your elbow in order to get that solid pocket to distribute the recoil but I want to show you how to put that loop sling together so that you can be uh, very effective in using this sling so let's step over to the bench A not so small added benefit of the military style sling is that the, you can buy them for about fourteen ninety five uh, plus shipping and handling and all that but uh, that typically is about less than half of what you'll pay for a relatively useless uh, carry strap, even though some of them are very handsome and they're very nicely handcrafted and it might have your initials on it and things like that. This is a more usable sling, but it's going to come packaged like this with a rubber band around it, and you're going to take note of the fact that it's not put together correctly it's uh it's not going to be it's not going to be configured for your use as this is right here this happens to be on my ar-15 and we're going to we're going to have it all configured correctly uh, when we get done now if you're going to be using it on an ar-15 uh for a you know a2 or an a4 style uh service rifle shooting you want to leave this particular clip on and the clip should face outboard, it should face the buckle and it should face uh, away from this tab here and I'll show you how that's configured. If you're going to be using it on a, uh, and, and also the front, the front end will be left bare, in other words because this is going to receive the uh, permanently mounted sling mounting position that's on your AR rifle. So that's that will be left bare and this clip will be left on the uh, back end. If you're using it for a uh, sporter rifle, you'll want to take, make sure that you retain your, your clamp. You want to have a uh, detachable sling swivel that you can permanently mount to the uh, back end of it rather in place of that clip. You know, it's kind of comical. I, I, I don't know Sometimes it's some, sometimes it's frightening how 
how, how dim people can be, but I've heard people say that this clanks and makes noise against this. You don't use them both together, all right? This, they both, they're both they're both sling swivels. You don't use you don't use one with the other. That's not that's not their function. One person wrote that he had to grind down his he had to grind down this clip in order to fit it through the sling swivel. You use one or the other, but you don't use both. So if you're going to use it for a civilian rifle, you just simply take and put this away in dead storage. All right. So let's see if we can get this correctly assembled. I've Stripped it all down to its bare essentials. This buckle is permanently mounted right on the right on the strap, and the other end is simply a metal tab. Now I want you to know it's, it's very important to know that the stud spacing on your typical uh, sporter rifle tends to run about 27 inches between the front and the rear uh, mounting position, 27, 28 inches thereabouts. That's very typical, and that fits, that conforms perfectly to the so-called Garan sling or the M14 sling, which has similar spacing. However, if you're going to be mounting a uh, sling on a AR platform rifle, you want to make sure that you uh, get a 52-inch uh, sling. Now, there's been some misadvertising on some of them. Some of them will say that they're 52 inches before they're sewn together. Well, that's a bunch of BS. You don't want a 52-inch sling before it's sewn together. You want a 52-inch sling after it's sewn together. So don't let them try to sell you something that isn't. Uh, you need to have, if you want to have full adjustability when you're wearing a heavy shooting coat or uh, outdoor garment, you want to make sure you have a full-length uh, sling for your AR-15. So, have it dismantled, and you want to have this. You want to have this particular loop. You can see this. You can see this uh, sewed together piece. You want to have that mounted so that it turns so that when you put your sling swivel on, it's now in this configuration right here. And there's a reason for that because this right here will stand off sling and the metal surface from your rifle to prevent damage. Now you want to take the damage to your finish. So now you want to take that and run it up through your buckle. And this is not this buckle is not for the purpose of adjustment. This buckle is for the purpose of forming your shooting loop and I'll show you how that's done in a minute. Uh, but you want to turn you want to turn that down through just like that. So now what you end up with is this. Okay, so I'll give you a moment to check that out. It's just you just have one turn. You don't want to have this wrapped around again as it comes out of the package. That's not what you want to do. That's why you want to take this you want to take this apart from the buckle. You want to unthread it and rethread it in this configuration. It's going to be turned backwards from the way it came in your package more than likely. So once you've got that, once you've got that configured, now it's simply a simple matter of going to the other end and here's your tab. We've got the we're going to have the the buck this is the top of the strap, the outer portion of the strap. So we have the buck the buckle up maintain it in that position and this is the outside of the strap still you want to push this you want to push this down through and notice that notice that there's a leading edge the leading edge has got these two little tabs right here this is the leading edge the leading edge faces toward the back end of the strap down toward the buckle now, that completes the arrangement. This end of the loop right here always goes down through, down through your front loop. So if you're using a military, if you're using a military rifle that has a fixed loop, or if you're using a sporter rifle that has a fixed loop, then you would simply pass this down through, always down through, remember down. So in other words, you end up with this tab on the inside of your strap and you have this is flush surface on the outside. 
So I would always prefer with a sporter rifle to make sure I have a detachable sling swivel. And you can check and make sure that you're, you know, for, for the purposes, actually this is backwards, for the purposes of uh, uniformity, you want to have you want to have this hardware right here, the way it goes into your uh, studs, mounted on the same way, just for, just just for appearance sake alone. And that now simply feeds down through that loop and engages the buckle. This now becomes your this becomes your adjustment. All your adjustments are done the length from this buckle here. That's the reason why you have that buckle. Because a lot of people think that the, the, other, the other buckle is for adjustment. That buckle is not for adjustment at all, and that's why you want to have it mounted back here, because this becomes a shooting loop. By simply opening it up, and you can see I'm not, I'm not using, this is not the part that I'm opening up. People get confused about that. This is not the part I'm opening up. I'm opening up right in the middle of the buckle feeding that out, that becomes my arm loop, and that is the part that is turned outboard to, to, fit, my, to fit my arm into. So that's, that's how that's configured. And to mount that to my, to mount that to my Model 70, for instance, it's just a very simple matter of, but I simply position that, and rear one and you know unless you unless you uh, have a reason to have a sling for each rifle uh, now you have one sling that you can use for any number of for a multitude of rifles and uh, once that once that sling gets a little bit broken in and the, the cotton fabric uh, loosens up a little bit, it's a very very handy, uh, easy to use sling. So let's go again into how that's tightened up. So there you go. As I said, if you properly mount it, you'll have this you'll have this tab right here protecting the stock from uh, contacting that uh, sling swivel, and it stands off that buckle. Uh, better too. The buckle now is uh, spaced far away from your stock, so nothing can contact your stock. And you've got absolute silence here. There's no there's no noise whatsoever. It's absolutely absolutely silent. Uh, on the front end, it's just remember it's passed down through with the tab on the back side on the or the inside you might say. And when you first get them, the uh, the adjustment, the adjustment clasp will be, it'll be stiff, you know, just like a new pair of shoes or something. It'll be a little bit stiff, but don't, don't be concerned about that because very, very quickly, uh, it'll, it'll break in and it'll loosen up just by normal usage. The more you move that, the more you move that around, uh, the, uh, the quicker that'll happen. Now, you can always use it as a standard carry strap very comfortable carry strap and you can adjust that for uh, any way that you want to carry it you can you can use this as a hasty sling a hasty sling again just put your arm through around and then down through and it's you know that after a while that becomes so that becomes so fast that you can get right into position. I certainly don't recommend that for a woods hunter who all of a sudden has a deer pop up in the middle of the woods because that's just a matter of pointing and shooting. But that hasty sling is very, very nice if you happen to be a field where you have a quick, a fairly quick uh, need for a shot. Uh, you want to get into position, you can, drop, you can do that as you're dropping into the kneeling position, dropping into the sitting position, the, quickly getting into a prone you can get you can get that hasty sling going on the way down but if you have time you know if you're and certainly if you're a competitive shooter if you have time just simply open up and this certainly can occur with uh, such shooting as pronghorn antelope uh, that you see off in the distance you know there in a there's a there's a bunch of them grazing um, 
once you open up that once you open up that loop just turn it one turn outboard I'm turning it one basically it's a half a turn I'm looking at the inside of the strap right here so watch carefully I'm turning it half a turn away from me and then slide my arm down through all the way up far as you can go and draw it up quickly and again you know you can you can get pretty uh, pretty adroit at doing that the arm lays down over the inside over the inside of the strap and that's your that's your makeup for your that's your loop sling now that's how that's how every marine was uh, taught uh, up until a few years ago how to uh, shoot with his marksmanship uh, course and up until the uh, early 50s uh, that's how the mid 50s or so that's how uh, army personnel were also taught they they since got away from that and uh, they they use now more uh, well they're it's this less there's less finite marksmanship involved as there is more tactical training shooting at uh, silhouette targets and things like that so but you know, it's a sad thing that they got away from that I think because marksmanship is always marksmanship you can always you know you, a, a person who's a tactician can always fall back on marksmanship there's no problem with that uh, you know one one is not independently uh, different than the other so now that's your that's your loop sling simply just drop your arm over and you're into position and you you know and if you're a field there's certainly nothing wrong if you if you think you're in a neighborhood of uh, muleys or something like that and you may have an opportunity for a long-range shot there's nothing wrong with carrying the rifle around with the uh, sling loosened on your bicep so that uh, you can quickly just on the way down into a position you can just simply snap snap that up tight and get into position nothing wrong with that at all that's a perfectly perfectly okay I wouldn't probably do it because you know there's no need but um, in a hasty sling is uh, in hunting circumstances is a beautiful uh, method to get into take advantage of take advantage of a sling it's not just don't just don't just relegate it to being uh, you know a, a simple carry strap it's that too but it's far more vital and far more important to you as a marksman and for good shooting so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and God bless